Welcome to the Apostolic Keynote Podcast from Kingdom Faith Church. This message is by Colin Urquhart. Paul says that we are all sons of God through faith in Christ Jesus. And we know what it is to be a son or a child of God, a daughter of God. It's by his grace, through his mercy, because of his love. And of course, being in that position, that privilege of being a son or a child of God, we can relate to him as our father. It was this revelation of sonship that transformed my ministry and led me into the revival in 1970 that took place in Luton. And I explained that while I was away on holiday this year, God has taken me right back to the very foundational things that produce revival in our lives. And I've been going through a process with him ever since. And part of that is sort of reawakening, if you like, the revelation of sonship. And I can remember that uh, when this revelation first hit my heart, of course I was an Anglican vicar at the time, but I realized that I would never again need to minister or serve God's people as an Anglican clergyman, but as a son of God. That I could do everything as a son of God. I could speak like a son of God, preach like a son of God, heal like a son of God. Uh, Whatever I did, I could do with the authority of a son of God, with the power of a son of God, with the love of a son of God, and so on. The faith of a son of God. Completely revolutionized my ministry, and of course, what I was doing doing or what God was doing through me subsequently was to lead people into this revelation of sonship. So within 15 months or so, I had a whole church full of people that were living as sons of God. We didn't call it revival at the time, but that's certainly what it was. And God has a question for you, really three questions in one for you this morning. Because the significant thing is not knowing that we're sons of God, but that we live as sons of God. And what is the key to that? Paul, when he's writing to the Ephesians, says, I urge you to live a life worthy of the calling you have received. I urge you to live a life worthy of the calling you have received. When he's writing to the Philippians, he says, Whatever happens... Conduct yourselves in a manner worthy of the gospel of Christ. Questions that you ask of yourself can help you to walk with the Lord in the way that he intends. The only thing is you have to keep asking the question. You don't ask it just once, but you keep asking it of yourself. And the three questions are all about worthiness. Is what I say and do worthy of God? 
So before making a decision, even in practical things that go on day by day, can I watch this program and be worthy as a son of God? Can I listen to what other people are saying or what's happening and be worthy as a son of God? Is this worthy? The decision I make, is this worthy of God? Is this worthy of me as a son of God? Now, why it's three questions in one is because in asking this question, you're actually asking three questions. You're saying, is what I'm about to do worthy of my Father in heaven? Because if it's worthy of him, then it's worthy of me to do as a son of God. If it's not worthy of me to do as a son of God, then it's not worthy of God in heaven. Now, when we worship God, what the word worship means is to give worth to God. It's telling him how worthy he is. So it would make no sense if I indulge in the practice of singing or praising or speaking praises to God, but what I'm actually doing and the decisions I'm making are not worthy of him. So I can't separate what is worthy of God as my father and what is worthy of me as his son. The two things are the same. The third question is, well, is this worthy of Jesus as my Savior? Did he save me in order to do this because it's worthy of him? Because he certainly didn't save me to do something that is not worthy of him. Now, why I say we need to keep asking the question is we're very good at forgetting to ask the question if there's something we want to do that probably isn't worthy of him. We have the gift of the Holy Spirit of God living within us. And when you ask the question, is this worthy of God my Father, of Jesus my Savior, or of me as a son of God? Same question in three ways. When we ask this question, 99.9 times we know the answer. We have the witness of the Holy Spirit, and we actually know full well whether what we're intending to do is worthy of him or is not worthy of him. Notice I'm not saying, is this right or is this wrong? That's not the question. Is it worthy of him? You see, the Holy Spirit will never, ever, 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 ever lead us to do something that is not worthy of him. So we always have the witness of the Holy Spirit within us to inform us, to lead us, to guide us into what is worthy of him. And if it's worthy of him, then it glorifies him. And we can use these glib phrases, you know, I live for the glory of God because we're called to live for the glory of God. But what does that mean in practice? It means that I live worthy of my high calling. What 
do we need to repent of in our lives? Whatever we have said or done that was not worthy of him, because if it wasn't worthy of him, it's sin. So if we love the Lord, we want to live lives worthy of him. And if we want to live lives worthy of him, then we'll keep asking ourselves the question. During the normal course of events, and it doesn't mean that we need to ask the question before everything we do, but Sometimes I believe the Holy Spirit causes us to pause and asks the question of us, do you really think that is worthy of you as a son of God? And during the process that God's been taking me through these last few weeks, I've had to acknowledge certain things that are not really worthy of God. They're less than worthy of God. And that's what the Lord all the time has to take out of our lives because we don't want to live a kind of schizophrenic Christianity where on the one hand we're living worthy of him but at the same time we're allowing things in our lives that are not worthy of him. Jesus, of course, during the days of his humanity, lived a life of perfect worthiness. Perfect love, perfect faith, perfect submission to his Father, therefore, perfect worthiness. And because he lived that life of perfect worthiness, he could <coughs> be the sacrifice for us on the cross that made us worthy in God's sight. This is what it is to be saved. To be saved is to be made worthy in God's sight. It's to be made righteous, it's to be made holy, it's to be sanctified, to be glorified even, to be made worthy in God's sight. So having been made worthy through the blood of Jesus, God says, well now, live up to your high calling in the worthiness that I have made possible through my sacrifice for you. So every time we deliberately do anything that is unworthy, we're actually denying what God has done for us on the cross. Praise God, in his mercy, he can forgive and restore us There may be times when we inadvertently do things that are not worthy and realize that afterwards, wow, that was just not worthy. I should not have done that. At the heart of all this is the nature of our hearts, whether in our hearts we really want to glorify God, we really want to please God, we really want to see the outworking of his will and purpose. But there's a certain number of things that <clears throat> result from seeking to live a life worthy of our high calling, worthy of our sonship. One is that God will cause us to prosper uh, because we're actually walking in the way that he desires us to walk. And just as <clears throat> we see in the life of Jesus that every need was met in his life, so every need will be met in our lives. But also, of course, living in that worthiness enabled Jesus to minister so powerfully and effectively to other people. And the same will be true for us. The more that worthiness is reflected in our lives, the more of the authority and the power, the life of God will be released through us, <clears throat> both personally and corporately 
as the body of Christ in this place. And the more we will prosper in every way as the body of Christ. This is the outworking of what it means to live in the fear of the Lord. And we know that there is so little fear of God in our nation, in our society, and that what God needs to do in the body of Christ generally in this nation and in other nations also, of course, is to restore that sense of the fear of the Lord in the church. If it's not in the church, it's not going to be in the nation. But to live in the fear of God is not to be afraid of him, but to fear displeasing him. To fear doing anything that would not be worthy of him. And the amazing thing is that when we do things that are not worthy of him, God doesn't judge us, doesn't condemn us. He doesn't throw us out of the kingdom. We don't cease to be his children. But he... always forgives and restores. But that doesn't, of course, give us license to have a casual attitude towards the will of God. So I found that this is a very pertinent question to live with. It's a question I live with. Is this worthy of my Father? Is it worthy of Jesus? Is it worthy of me as a son of God? And there have been times when the Holy Spirit lovingly and gently has said to me, Colin, that was not worthy of me. Or that was not worthy of you. That's God. He doesn't accuse, he doesn't condemn, but he does convict us when we do things that are not pleasing to him, that are not right in his eyes. Of course, the whole process begins with our thinking. Because what we say, what we do, is the product of what we think. Even our faith is the product of what we think. So, the bottom line is really, in my thinking, my thinking needs to be worthy of God. My attitudes need to be worthy of being a son of God. My reaction to whatever happens in my life, to what people say, to what people do to me, my reaction needs to be worthy. When people take offense, they are acting in a way that is not worthy of God. It's not worthy of them as sons of God or children of God. So we are left with the understanding that if it's not worthy of him, then it grieves him. And if I love him, I don't want to grieve him. I might sometimes grieve him inadvertently, but I don't set out to grieve the Lord. I set out to please the Lord, as I'm sure you do. So in what we're saying here, God wants to see consistency in our lives. That persistence. You can say that this is the outworking of what it means to live in the holiness and righteousness of Jesus. Because everything about his holiness is worthy of God. 
everything about righteousness is worthy of him. So you can describe it in all kinds of different ways. But I found that this little question covers all those bases. Not in some kind of hyper-spiritual way, but just in a very simple, practical way. Is this worthy of me as a son of God? Is this worthy of my father whose son I am? Is this worthy of the Savior who died for me to make me worthy in his sight. Of course, having asked the question, you then have to do the answer. It's a simple message. What does it mean to live in revival? What's it like? You live a life worthy of God. By his grace, through his spirit, you think differently, you speak differently, you act differently, because everything is for the worthiness of God, and you can't even have a wrong thought without immediately being convicted. That was not worthy. It's not a heavy thing. It's a liberating thing. And of course, it's the result you see of the Holy Spirit being in control in our lives. That we don't simply refer to the Holy Spirit at certain moments when we need Him, but we have yielded the control of our lives over to Him. So here's a simple message. If you want to live in revival, just live a life worthy of him. Can't do it yourself. Has to be in the power of the Spirit. He will always lead you to do what is worthy of him so that you can live out your sonship. And then all the life, the power, and authority of your sonship will be a reality in your life and not just a theory. And all we can really do is praise God that he's made all this possible and that in his love for you and his love for me, this is what he wants. He is forever drawing us closer to himself. And of course, because he is perfectly worthy, the more of that worthiness that is reflected in our lives, the closer we will walk with him. And the closer we walk with him, the more fruitful and productive we will be and therefore the more he will be glorified in our lives. So I praise God that in this coming season we will all live lives that are more worthy of him 
through his mercy, by his grace, in his love. And as a result, we will walk more closely with him and with one another in the unity and the bond of his love. And we will see more of the life, the love, and the power of God, more of the authority of God being exercised in our lives personally and in the life of the body here corporately. And of course, the outworking of that will be multiplication, harvest, and abundance. Because you won't see the multiplication, harvest, and abundance without taking seriously what God is saying to us this morning. Harvest is happening every day all over the world. I don't know how many thousands of people come to the Lord every day, but <clears throat> the kingdom of God is being extended every day all over the world. What we desire to see above all is the multiplication and the harvest and God's abundance in every way, including financially, here. And you'll find that those three things will go together, the multiplication, the harvest, the abundance. And uh, I said to you in a, a couple of weeks ago in a keynote that God is always speaking when there is need. And we always, therefore, have to listen to what he's saying. Because it isn't that he creates need, but he allows need <clears throat> to get our attention. And we can try to satisfy the need in all kinds of other ways and miss what God is saying. And I've been concerned in praying about this in these last few weeks. And I believe that what I'm sharing with you this morning is is really part, at least part of it, but a central part of God's answer to the multiplication, the harvest, the abundance. Do everything worthy of him. To glorify him. Because you see, he is glorified in multiplication and harvest and abundance. He wants those things. He's grafted those things into our heart as desire to see. And we thank God for all that he's doing already, but we know that small fry compared to what is to come. So, Lord, I want to live worthy of my sonship because if I live worthy of my sonship, I live worthy of you as my father and I live worthy of you, Jesus, my savior. Shall we all stand? Now, just remember one of the things that the scripture tells us not to do is to examine ourselves or to look back. You don't look in, you don't look back. You keep your eyes on Jesus, you keep your eyes focused on what lies ahead. So God doesn't want us to respond to this word by starting to examine ourselves. That would be counterproductive. But just to fix our eyes on him, to know that whatever has not been worthy of him is under his blood. And we can thank the Lord for that. We don't have to go through a whole process. 
we can thank him for that. He says, well, what concerns me now is what lies ahead. That you live lives worthy of your high calling. That you live lives worthy of your sonship, worthy of me as your father, worthy of Jesus as your savior. So let's thank the Lord. Let's thank him for his mercy. Thank him that anything and everything in our lives that has not been worthy of him in our thinking, in our speaking, in our attitudes, in our relationships, in our actions, is all under the blood of Jesus. Hallelujah. And he is ready to forgive all of that. We don't have to rehearse every, every possible dimension of that. Just, just knowing in your heart, Lord, I just heard your word to me this morning and I don't want anything in my life that is not worthy of you. And I ask you now this morning, by the power of your precious blood, to wash me clean of anything and everything that is not worthy of you, any attitude of my heart, any, any area of my thinking, any way in which I speak, any way in which I act, any way in which I relate, or any way in which I make decisions that are not worthy of you. I thank you, Lord, that now they're covered by your blood. You forgive me for all that. And thank you, Lord, that this is, this is like a new beginning, like a, a fresh, uh, the opening of a fresh chapter of a closer walk with you because... Now, Lord, the, the desire of my heart that is in everything, I want to live worthy of you. And I thank you for the Holy Spirit. I thank you for the gift of your spirit. I thank you that he lives within me and that he will always bear witness as to what is worthy of you. That whenever I ask the question, is this worthy, he will give me the answer. He will always lead me into what is worthy. He will never lead me into anything that is unworthy of you. He will only lead me into what will glorify you, into what will please you, in what will honor you, in what will fulfill the plan and purpose, the destiny that you have for me. And I thank you for that precious gift of the Holy Spirit. So I thank you, Lord, for the blood cleansing me of all the negatives and the Holy Spirit supplying all that is positive, that now I might live a life worthy of you beyond anything that I've lived in the past that, Lord, you would take me into another level, uh, uh, into, into another dimension of, of my walk with you, a closer walk with you, Lord. And I thank you, and I praise you, and I bless you. Koratari eletu korazotama. Pupapara zatu parazitari sandari eleno masantu. Palatopori eletu korazotari sandari eletu papaparanduma. Pasandari eletu gorosotari santu. Pasandari eletu papapakala sanduma. Thank you, Lord. It is for freedom that you have set me free. You freed me from anything and everything that is not worthy of you. That it's all history now. It's not part of me. It doesn't belong to me. You, you freed me from all that stuff. And I give you glory, Lord. Maybe there's... Maybe it's something that we've been fighting with for a long time, but now we're set free from it, Lord, because we realize, well, it's not worthy of you, so it doesn't belong to me. Hallelujah. It's not part of my life as a son of God, as a child of God. And I thank you, Lord. I thank you that all the things that are not worthy of you are not worthy of me and no longer belong to me. And I praise you and I bless you. I thank you. I thank you for your saving grace, Lord. And Lord, I pray not only for myself, but for everybody in the body here that everything in kingdom faith will be worthy of you. That everyone, every member, everybody who belongs to the church, all those who relate to us in any way, that, Lord, you would so move in our hearts and lives that we will be dedicated, devoted to living lives that are worthy of you. 
that you were cut out of our lives, or we were cut out of our lives. Anything that is not worthy, anything that hinders, anything that holds us back from your best purposes. And we thank you, Lord, that as by your grace we move ahead in your purposes, so we will see the multiplication and the harvest and the abundance that you promised. And we give you glory, we give you honor, we give you praise. Thank you, Lord, that in your wisdom you wait until we're in the place with you where all those things can rightly be released into our experience. We thank you for your wisdom, Lord. We thank you for, for your faithfulness to us. We thank you, Lord, that you are faithful in your covenant and we want to be faithful in that covenant. And under the terms of the covenant, of the new covenant, everything in our lives is to be worthy of you. Everything is to be done in loving obedience to you. And we thank you, Jesus. We praise you that we can see just a strengthening of that covenant relationship with you, that covenant relationship with one another, living in love for you, living in a deeper and, and greater love for one another. And we praise you and we bless you. We worship you, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, thank you, thank you, Jesus. Puratapare leto gorazotari sandari elena ma santuma. O papapapara sandari leto papapapakala sandoma. Oh, thank you, thank you, thank you, Lord. Thank you for the cleansing and purifying of hearts, of motives, of intentions, even of desires that we have, so that we desire only that which is worthy of you. Thank you, Lord, that that you set us free from any soulish desires that are counterproductive to your will in our lives, that we will not feed those soulish desires, but we will seek to see the fulfillment of the desires of your Spirit that you put within us by your Holy Spirit. And we thank you, Lord. We praise you. And thank you, Lord, that by your grace we will walk in that holiness and that righteousness that is your holiness and your righteousness, that we have nothing of our own but only that which is of you. And we praise you, Lord, that your Holy Spirit enables this for the glory and the honor and the praise of your name. Thank you, Lord, you want to enhance our worship that not only with, in words, but the worship of our lives, hallelujah, that we will give you what you are worth, the very best, and that we will not see, do anything knowingly or intentionally that undermines that or is opposed to that. And we give you glory. We give you honor. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Can you thank God for what he's doing in your heart and in your life this morning? Hallelujah. As you respond to his word. As you respond to his word, it takes immediate effect in your life. Immediate effect. There's, no, there's not a delay. When you respond to the word of God, there's immediate effect in your life. Hallelujah. There's not a delay and God says, well now, you know, we'll wait and see what happens. No, no, there's immediate effect. Can you thank him for that? Lord, this word is having immediate effect in my life. Hallelujah. I turn aside from anything that is not worthy of you and I will live to, to think, to speak, to do only that which is worthy of you. And I praise you, Lord. I bless you. And thank you, Lord, that as I keep my eyes focused on you in obedience to your word, instead of just looking at myself or looking at circumstances, as I keep my eyes fixed on you, so I will know what is worthy of you. I will know what pleases you. I will know what your will is in every situation with which I'm confronted. 
And I thank you, Lord, that when I seek that worthiness, then I ha always have the revelation of what is right in your eyes, what pleases you. And I thank you, and I praise you, and I bless you. Balandaria leto corazotri santo per corazotri santo. Basandaria leto papapara santori santo. And now, Lord, I thank you that the enemy cannot bring us under any false condemnation or accusation. Hallelujah. He is a defeated enemy. Praise God. He has no claim on our lives whatsoever. We're not going to listen to any lying accusations, any false condemnation. We're not going to put ourselves under any self-condemnation for any failure of the past because all the failures of the past are washed away. They no longer exist, and we praise you for that, Lord. We will not listen to the lies and the accusations of the enemy. We will only listen to the voice of your Spirit, to your Word and your Spirit working together in our lives, enabling us to walk in ways that are worthy of you. And we give you glory, we give you honor, we give you praise. Kura taparia leto garazotari santama. O papapapara santari saria leto garazotama. Santo papakataria leto garazotari santari halama. Hallelujah. Can we really praise God now? Just give him the, what he is worth. The one who has made us worthy. Hallelujah. Pura tapare leto papa papa para zandari sandu. Papa papa para zato papa kala zato papa kala zina. Papa 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 para zandu. Hallelujah. 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 Hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Just continue in prayer for a moment. You see, we're not trying to make ourselves worthy. No, no. Jesus Christ has made us worthy. So we're living in the worthiness that he has already given us. Hallelujah. His blood makes you as worthy in the sight of God as Jesus himself. So what God is saying is live in that worthiness. You're not trying to make yourself more worthy. Live in the worthiness. That's why the question is, is this worthy of you? Is this the worthy of the worthiness that God has given you in Christ? In Christ Jesus? Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord, that you have made us worthy. You are the only one who has worthiness in and of yourself, but you have made us worthy in your sight through your precious blood. And thank you that by your grace and in the power of your spirit, we will live in the good of that worthiness, giving glory, honor, and praise to your holy name. We bless you, Jesus. Come on, we need to finish with some real praise here, some real worship of God. Hallelujah. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, Lord. Pa 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 la za tu pa 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 la si tu di san. Oh pa 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 la za tu pa 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 la si tu di san. Oh pa 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 la za tu di san. Hallelujah. So let's just close with the words of God. I urge you, I urge you to live a life worthy of the calling you have received. Be completely humble and gentle. Be patient, bearing with one another in love. Make every effort to keep the unity of the Spirit through the bond of peace. Hallelujah.
There is one body and one spirit, just as you were called to one hope when you were called, one Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God and Father of all, and listen, who is over all and through all and in all. But to each one of us, grace has been given as Christ apportioned it. Hallelujah. Whatever happens, conduct yourselves in a manner worthy of the gospel of Christ. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord, that your Holy Spirit enables the outworking of these words in our lives for your praise, honor, and glory. Amen. Thank you for listening to this Kingdom Faith podcast. We trust it's been an encouragement to you. For more information and resources from Kingdom Faith and our other audio and video podcasts, please visit www.kingdomfaith.com. Thank you.